Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm JP Tong, and welcome to today's episode of Detox Your Mind. This weekend is a uh, festival that all Buddhists and uh, Taoists around the world will be celebrating, and it's called the Ulambana Festival. Uh, and in the Chinese culture, it's also better. It is also known as the Hungry Ghost Festival. So I thought that it would be. Um, Appropriate for me to talk about embracing our mortality. Embracing our mortality. You see, in general, we often don't think about our mortality.、Um, we always think that you know there's always tomorrow,、um, and、um, whatever it is that we like to do or that we want to do, we will. Sometimes we may think we have more time. There's always more time, or there's There is another time to do this. So, so what I'm trying to say is, not many people actually, you know, spend the time to think about when our big day will come, and that's the mortality. And some people may think, you know, JP, why are you talking about this? It's it's so morbid. Well, it is very very important to talk about it because that's a fact of life. Everybody has to go through it. And、um, and often people don't do not want to talk about it because of superstitious reasons,、um, you know. Because if you talk about it, then then it may come true, or or some people are just too scared to talk about their mortality. And there's so many other reasons, or or they feel very sad about it. And you know, some people are just not ready to even think about it. So whatever the reasons may be, I would like to invite all of you to really,、um, you know, to actually be open. To today's talk about embracing our mortality, and if you find it very difficult to even think about it, well, I will give you some tips later on. All right. So now you'd be surprised because when we are aware of our death, and when we learn to embrace it,、um, or in other words, accept it, is actually going to be very transformational for us. Okay. So that is why. You will always hear about people who have, you know, who have gone through near-death experiences, and after that, they their entire attitude changes. Okay, because to because to to them, they have a second chance to life, and they're not going to waste it. All right. So, but you see, not everyone has those near-death experiences. To have that transformation, so how do we get to that level? All right, and that's what I'm going to talk about as well. But you see, but not everyone to,、uh, turns out to be positive after they've had the near-death experience, or if somebody is terminally ill, or have a risk of losing their lives. And some people go into into a state of depression. Some people go into a state of denial.、Um, Some are even angersome as a result, and so it's not always positive. Not always positive, and the reason that is not always that is not positive is because because they find it very difficult to accept. They find it very difficult to accept that there is a chance that they may lose their life, or that. They are that their life is ending soon because of health reasons. So many many reasons. Okay, so something that we will talk about shortly, and、um, what else? So what are the effects of embracing mortality? Now, the effect is that it will give us a perspective. That or an understanding that any time we may that you know our life may end, any time, all right. So we we don't know when, but it's any time. So when we think about it, especially during this this、uh, COVID pandemic, and you know I have relatives、um, who passed away and、um, friends who you know who who. Who were infected by COVID and nearly passed away. So, see, so, and that's that's the current situation right now. So, mortality is always 
um, a conversation for me. So I'm not sure about, about you guys, but for me, I always hear that. And it always helps me put things into perspective because, you know, when I, when I really, when I actually um, internalize that, you know what, JP, my life may just end, you know, um, anytime. So, so what's next for me? And that, that opens up a lot of things, a lot of perspective as to how I'm going to live my life right now. So when we embrace it and be okay with it, although, you know, sometimes we may find it very difficult and it may just be, you know, for reasons because, you know, we, we may not be able to leave our loved ones or our life is too, you know, we're enjoying our life too, too much. And we, and, and it'd be very sad if we, if we leave right now. And for some people, they say, you know, there's so many things I've not done. So whatever the reasons may be that, that stops you from not embracing your mortality, that's something that we're going to look into right now, right now. Okay. So realize this, our duration on this planet, which we call earth can end any time. It can end any time and is beyond our control. So when we, so take time to think about it. And that is a fact. All right. Some may say, oh, but I'm still young. Doesn't matter because things can happen. Things can happen. Or, oh, um, and, and for some people, they can be in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And, and when you're at that age, I notice that mortality is always at the back of, of the mind. But whether or not they embrace it, that's, that's, that's another question. Yeah. So again, different, depending on which phase of your life you're in or, or which age group in, uh, of your life you're in, regardless, mortality is is uh, unforeseen. So realize that because that is very, very important. Okay. So when we do that, then the next question that I would, that I always ask myself is, you know, life is like going on a vacation. Okay. And you know that it will end one day. All right. So for, so for, for those of you who love to go on vacations, where be it by, you know, if you go to the beach, to the mountains, sightseeing, whatever it is that you like to do, Envision your life as a vacation, your best vacation, all right? That, and you know that it will end one day. Now, with that understanding, how would your attitude be during this vacation? Think about it. How would, you, how would your attitude be? Okay, are, are you going to allow little things affect you negatively? Are you, how? So what are the possible changes to our attitude? Okay, as a result, well, when you're on a vacation of your lifetime, then you will also think about it. The, you know, the, the few times when you went on a really fantastic vacation, how was your attitude? Were you more accepting? Um, and you just feel joyous, you know, I've, the trees are greener, the sky is more blue. Um, just everything seems to be so much more vibrant when you're on vacation, okay? Um, and, and your reaction to people and situations are usually more positive and you won't let, you know, petty things uh, disturb your mind and you won't feel, and you won't allow things to kind of spoil the mood, right? Um, and you won't have time to feel depressed. You won't have time to feel angersome. You won't be in, you know, have the mood to feel frustrated. You won't because you want to enjoy the time that you have on this fantastic vacation of yours, right? Um, so that's the kind of change in the attitude. And there's so much more. There's so much more to the changes in that attitude. So think about it. So if our life is like a vacation where you know that it will end, Okay, at one point of your life, it will end. What is it? What kind of an attitude are you going to have in your life? So let that sink in. 
for a few seconds. Just let it sink in. Okay, so you so this is your life. Okay, some of you may say, "Oh, I hate my life," or some of you, "Oh, yeah." I'm, some of you may say, "Oh, I'll, uh, I mean, I'm I'm enjoying my life," or whatever it is. Just think about it. Okay, knowing that it will end one day, and you don't know when. So what's going to be different? I'm going to let it sink in, and let me see who's here tonight. Uh, hi Nancy, hi hi Lucin, Caroline, Cat Steven, hi Sushin, hi Serena, hi Lily, Lai, Lai Heng, Jesse, Agnes, and uh, Yiman, Dean Holland, hello, Sofan, Sharon, and the rest of you whom um, whom are watching right now. So thank you very much for for tuning in. This this topic that I'm talking about it's life changing when we truly when we spend the time to to, to have a really good look at it and not have it as an inst you know as a topic of intellectual instant you know stimulation because why because nothing happens except that your mind is stimulated and that's it but let it really sink in and let and and really have another good look about this reality of life that we often not think about okay for reasons that are, that are, that I spoke about all right so Think about it. So again, what are the what are the changes to our attitude? Okay, so when we apply it to our life in general, there are reports, there are reports from people who had near death experiences or from people who are in the hospice and they know that they only have, you know, one or two months or even three months to live. And and the change in them where when they embrace their mortality is that they whatever afflictive emotions they have you know be it all their fears the insecurities um their anger their depression whatever you know all these afflictive emotions somehow just do not matter anymore they don't matter anymore because why? The time is almost up. And for those who've had near-death experiences, I had a friend who had a horrible car crash um, on the freeway, and she thought that was it. That was the end of her life. And that was like, she was, let me see, in her, in her mid, no, in her late 30s. And, and at that moment, she said that when, when, when her car you know, was spinning and all of a sudden it was, you know, it was just, it, it just stood still in the middle of the freeway. She thought she was going to get hit uh, by another car. But, um, and then she said that she saw her life just, you know, she's just like, um, like a slideshow of her life, just passing through all, whatever that she's done in her life, there were just visions of her life just, just, going through her mind and she, and she said that's it and a lot of, and she and at that point she panicked because she said oh you know because she's still young there's still so many things that she has not done that she has not done and she kind of procrastinated due to fear insecurities whatever it is that were stopping her from living her best life that kind of flesh that realization flesh and she said no if she had a second chance it will be different and thank goodness she had a second chance so see so those kind of near-death experiences when reality really hits you and then it really makes you realize that all these inhibitions that we may have that are in the way of us doing what we want to do that is that is important to us and this is very subjective what is important to me is not necessarily important to another person. So it's very, very personal, all right? And we're not here to judge. Whatever that is important for you, and, and you will realize that you're just going to do it regardless because that's what's important to you. So those are the, some of the changes that people actually experience um, when they're in, in that situation, okay? And there are also reports that 
experiences are more important than materialism. So what you buy, what you have, when death is knocking on your door, they say that is no longer, it's not in the mind. What they think about usually are the time that they spent with their loved ones, with their best friends. So it's all about experiences that they've had that was very meaningful and that stayed in the mind and that was most important when it's near-death experience or when the mortality is pretty much um, up. All right, so again, these are the huge changes in the, in, in the way that they place, that they actually look at, that they actually prioritize, sorry, that they actually prioritize um, in, their, in, uh, in their lives. And they also, when they have a second chance, they focus on spending more time with the loved ones, obviously, because, because they realize that it is spending quality time with people who matters. That's most important. Okay, and because of, and because they realize that death can that life can be taken away just like that, they live authentically and they live their best life. In other words, what does that mean to live authentically? To it, it means to live without your inhibitions. Um, such as your fears, insecurities, always, you know, you always care about what people think about you. Um, you, you know, uh, judging, uh, judging others, comparing, it really doesn't matter anymore. And you just tap into that authentic self in you. And what is that authentic self? The authentic self, as I've always said, is the compassionate, kind, altruistic, selfless pers or per uh, person in you. That is your authentic self. Some of you may say, oh, I don't feel it. How do you know that's authentic? Because, natu because naturally you are such. Look, when you were born, don't tell me you were a mean, nasty child, <laughs> right? When you were born as a, as a cute little baby, you are love, you know, you're very loving. Okay, you're, you're just a bundle of love. Think about it. And it's, only, and it's because of what, has hap of, what, of what has happened to you when we react to situations and people throughout our lives as soon as we're born and all the way until now, how we react to experiences and people actually form or you know made us who we are right now okay so we've been we've been conditioned to become who we are right now okay but innately we're kind compassionate selfless altruistic all that okay so that's what i mean by living authentically and because of that and when we connect to our true nature you begin to live your best life. Because think about it, when you're on vacation and when you want to really live your, you know, like really enjoy your vacation, you will not, you will not let the slightest thing uh, upset you or irritate you. You will just say, you know what? I'm not gonna react to that. Let's resolve it and just move on, okay? And because why? Well, I only have, you know, the, the few days or a week or two on during my vacation, I really want to enjoy it. So it's that shift of where you want to focus. And that's the same, same thing with life. Same thing with life, because once you truly embrace that your life can be cut short anytime, just like that, you don't have time to waste on pettiness. You won't have time to waste on how you, you know, about your expectations on others. You will have time to to, to project your expectations on, on yourself and you'll have time to criticize yourself and judge yourself. You won't have time to even focus on your fears and insecurities. And all. You won't have time to do that because any because why? You know that, you know what? You gotta cherish the moment and that's what it is. So 
So think about it. All right. So, so your entire focus becomes more positive. It's, it's not like you're in, in, in denial. It's just that, you know what? Life is too short. Let's do, let's focus on what is more constructive and on what you're so blessed with, what you're so blessed with. So the, so being great and the, the, the gratitude in you will come out. It will surface because you have that chance to be alive. Okay. And that is what being, being present is about staying in the now being present, being grateful. See, because present is actually a pun present, present as in now present or present as a gift. So having a chance to be alive now is also a gift. So every day that we live, it's a gift. It's a gift if you think on a deeper level. Because when you talk to people who are dying, every, every breath they take is a gift. Every moment, every second they're alive is a gift. So let us sink in even, even more. Because when we truly embrace that and internalize that, fact your life would change a hundred percent it would totally change and like i said earlier you every breath you take you feel joyous because why because you know that you have a chance to be alive and you will notice that the same tree that you see every day for some reason because of that shift in the attitude it's more vibrant, right? The birds, when they're chirping, wow. I mean, it's the best song that you've ever heard, although it's chirping every morning, right? So things become better because why? Because of the change in the attitude. And that's how you begin to live your best life. It's all about the attitude. It's all about the attitude. Okay, do we have any questions so far? Hi, Audrey. Hi, Arvin. Hi, Sharon. King Hoi, Hannah, Yin Ping. Hello. If you have any questions, please write it on the, on the comment section, and um, I'll be very happy to answer them for you. And after this, I will have a workshop to, to um, guide you on a meditation about what, what I'm talking about today, all right? So, and that's more interactive. So for those of you who prefer interactive program, join the workshop. It is not, it is via Google Meet, so it's not open to, to public because sometimes, you know, there may be some sensitive topics that you, wanted, that you may want to share and um, you don't want it to be recorded on Facebook and the whole world knows about it, all right? So, Okay, so moving along, as I'm talking, you can always ask your questions in the comment section. Now, how do we embrace our mortality? Well, again, developing that habit of reminding yourself on a daily basis takes consistency and discipline, okay? Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. That's what I always say. When we want to learn to adopt new habits that are healthier, it takes time and we got to give ourselves uh, time and we're going to be patient with ourselves that any type of change requires baby steps and requires consistency. All right. So guess what I'm going to say? Take the chill time. Okay. What is the chill time? Just chill at, you know, on your sofa, recliner, wherever it is that you want to chill by the pool side and just, Focus on something. Focus on something. Uh, focus on your drink, whatever it is that you're drinking. Focus on it for five, 10 minutes. Up to you. If, if you're very good at it by now, you can focus up to half an hour or 45 minutes. Up to you. But just take chill time. All right. So when you are in that chill, when you are in that chill moment, you are very grounded. Your mind is very calm. 
whatever thoughts are, are arising, whatever emotions are arising, you will bring that focus back to whatever it is that you want to focus on. Okay, it can be your drink, it can be your breath, it can be the sky, whatever it is, focus on something. Now, once that calmness settles in, then you think about what I just spoke about, which is life is unpredictable. Okay, it can be cut short just like that. And really embrace that and see what what arises in your mind see what arises in your mind all right and ask yourself if touch wood for whatever reason you catch covid okay i'm using covid right now because i'm using COVID because that's that's what we're all experiencing right now and that's that is a reality okay which we cannot avoid so let's talk about it confront it embrace it if we if for whatever reason we catch covid there's a chance we may live there's a chance we may not all right and with this delta variant uh, i've been you know watching the news it says that all you have is a week at most all right so if that's the case what's going to be different and let that sink in when you're having when you're having that chill time and think about it, okay? Every time I step out of my house and I go and I run my errands or I go to work, or whatever, whatever it is that you're doing that gives us the opportunity to meet others and that is a risk. Every time when we meet somebody, someone out there, that's a risk, all right? So, and that's the risk of us catching COVID and the risk of us, um, well, not living past a week. So what happens? So what's going to be different right now? Because you know what? I can't. There's some of you, you know, there's some people that just have to go to work to live. Or you have to go out because of whatever reasons. You just have to. So what's going to be different with my attitude? Knowing that life is so fragile. Let that sink in. And then see what, and see what arises for you. That's how you learn to embrace mortality, okay? By avoiding it, it's like being in self-denial. And that doesn't help, okay? And another way of embracing our mortality, now this is a bit more, this is a bit, to mm, so some of you, may, you know, it, may, it may be morbid, but to me, I love it because I, um, I went through this, this kind of visualization in one of a corporate, corporate training, you know, for self-awareness and, it's, it's, you know, and it will propel, propel you to the next level of success and all that. So, so it is commonly used uh, vis a visualization exercise that you do. Now, it's a visualization of the process of us dying. Okay, so, from, so you visualize yourself in your deathbed and you're dying and you and you just make it as vivid as vivid as you can and you visualize it in your mind and you and then you see the doctors trying to save you and then you take your last breath and the whole process of of the caretakers tech, you know uh cleaning you up dressing you putting you in a coffin all the way to being in a funeral home and you visualize people who are you know who who are paying the last rip last respects to you and you visualize the entire process of your funeral and if you're going to be buried or you're going to be cremated the entire process visualize that when you do your chill time every day you can do that and when we do that and when you do that consistently you see what happens to your mind make it as real as possible Sometimes, and when I did it in, in, during the corporate training, I was just sobbing away. Just sobbing away because you see all your loved ones saying, you know, saying the last goodbye to you. And it was just very moving. And a lot of things came up to my mind. And it made me realize that, that exactly what I said earlier, that instead of focusing on my fears and insecurities that are stopping me from 
doing what I wanted to do back then, I, I told myself, you know what? Life is really too short. And, I, and whatever it is that I want to do that is meaningful for me, uh, that will be the first thing on my list after I graduate from this corporate training. So that was my breakthrough with that visualization. So can you imagine if you do this visualization every day, every day, every day of your life? <clears throat> I can assure you, you will be very, you will embrace your mortality. You will embrace the fact that your life can be cut short just like that anytime. Okay. And you will notice that your priorities in life begin to change as a result. And you will get your breakthroughs from there. And a lot of your afflictive emotions, your insecurities, your fears, all that will no longer exist. No longer exist. Whatever you want, you, you want to forgive, you forgive, you, whatever you want to let go, you, you let go. Because why? Life is too short. It really doesn't matter. Because when you're, when you're visualizing yourself dying, <clears throat> all that, everything that you cannot forgive, it doesn't matter. You will realize this. And you don't need me or anyone to keep harping to you. You just realize deep down and you will know what to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so this is a very, very powerful topic that I'm talking about. It's a very potent topic. Potent in the sense that if we do the visualization very well and if we take the chill time and when we think about it every day every day for five ten minutes and we go okay it's a fact the day will come whether we like it or not whether we accept it or not it's a fact that day will come it's just any time embrace that and see what changes in your attitude in your life okay so on that note uh if you again if you like to uh follow me and uh to attend the workshop that will be more interactive where i get to talk to all of you uh, please uh, write in to be mindful at kachara.com as under the comment with miss freon uh, send the email and you will be given you will be emailed the google meet link okay and if you have any questions, please feel free to write on the comment section uh, after this, this um, talk, and I will answer them uh, later during the week. All right, so before we say goodbye, I would like to thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Anonymous Dedication, dedicated towards all beings' liberation from suffering and attainment of compassion, wisdom, and truth, happiness. Next sponsor is Lily Tan. Dedication, may we develop clarity of mind and wisdom and always be blessed by the three jewels. Sponsor, the third sponsor is Jolie Ku. Dedication, wishing everyone, everyone stay healthy. Uh, the next sponsor is Anonymous. Dedication, may their minds awake to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. The last sponsor for today's program is Lam Kok Luan and family. Dedication, may his eminence, Kepji Tsem Rimachi, return to care for us swiftly to, to, to turn the Dharma wheel again. Thank you very much for your sponsorship and it is with your contribution that we that will actually pay for the costs of running these online programs so that all of you can actually benefit for it so if you like to sponsor the program there is a link at the end of at the end of, of the recording there's a caption up there click it and you can make a contribution there so on that note thank you very much and i will see you next saturday bye-bye <laughs>